all crops grown must be cared for after they have been planted. This includes protecting them from pests. For the crops grown in the field, this is done in a similar way to cereals. The farmer will use an integrated approach, which may include using pesticide sprays. Sometimes sprays have to be used to provide perfect veg in the shop, when ugly mucky carrots and parsnips have the same nutritional value and are perfectly safe. Hi, my name is David MacDonald. I work for a biological company, which is Copper UK. Uh, we deal with all biological control to protect natural pests and enemies in the greenhouse. So we introduce beneficials, biological control. Normally it cannot get in into a closed environment. We have to introduce it by like simple things like sachets, which these are in turn um, for controlling uh, spider mites, little red spider mites which uh, attack the actual plants. And these are slow releasing sachets of a, a case of two to four weeks will lead to little mites and from hence will travel up and down the plant searching for any pests. Right. These are for controlling um, a little insect called thrip and then what these do is the actual um, the thrip, the pest which will actually in turn nibble on the actual cucumber and make them bent which will make them unsellable. Slow release sachets which are ambicillus cucumerius. A little mite will come out this little hole here and what it will do is it will migrate up and down the plant and you'll find normally in the actual flowers a little mite which will be searching for any thrip larvae. So as you can see those two there where the, the flowers are just cracked the bees will be released next week they'll pollinate those two flowers and within about a week we'll see a little tiny like a third of the size of a, a, a green pea which will then become the tomato. Right, what we do is when we first get the bees here we take them out and we put pollen in the top of the hive that's your pollen there because we're not going to be releasing them until we see the first flowers which actually crack on the plants so the pollen we just sprinkle a little bit into the hives to keep the bees alive and cover them up and then put them back onto the rack ready for releasing when we need to release when we see enough flower. When collecting pollen they also accidentally collect some on their bodies which they then transfer to the next plants they visit. Pollinating these plants which can then produce seeds and fruit. Successful growing in a glass house needs to provide the ideal conditions for whatever type of plants are grown. The heat and light are supplied by a combined heat and power unit, a CHP unit. A CHP unit is essentially an engine used to generate heat and electricity. The electricity is used for light in the greenhouse. The spare electricity is sold to the national grid. The CHP unit also produces heat with this boiler to heat the glass houses. Surplus heat is stored in these buffer tanks and pumped into the glass houses during the night. Using basic science of photosynthesis, growers will introduce extra carbon dioxide into the glass houses. This makes the plants grow quicker as they usually have enough water and sunlight for photosynthesis. The extra carbon dioxide comes from what is produced by the engine of the CHP unit and is pumped into the glass houses for the plants to use in photosynthesis. Running the CHP unit is carbon neutral. A neat recycling and environmentally friendly trick growers have been using for years. 